last video, we looked at circular orbits for spacecraft. And, and so this, is, this is uses the, the idea of the gravitational force and the definition of centripetal acceleration. And so I derived this, I'm not gonna redo it, but here's my work. This is the velocity you need to be in orbit. So it depends on your orbital distance. Okay, now the other thing I'm gonna get, I just wanna get this out of the way. Um, here's the other thing that we did. I, I calculated the orbital period, okay? Um, or the angular velocity, whatever you want. And we're gonna look at both of those two things. Let me start off with this. This is a program I made a while ago, and you can see the video. Uh, let me run it. Should be. There it goes. So this is the Earth, and there's an object moving near the Earth, and I just gave it some initial velocity, and we modeled the motion, and that was cool. But now I want to make this go into a circular orbit. So I'm going to modify this. Okay, so, and if you want to look, this has no, this is a pretty simple program. I'm just calculating the force and using that to update the momentum and things like that. So it's actually pretty cool. Uh, so, but let's make this circular. Uh, so the Earth is at the origin, so the craft is right here, uh, did, and I have this R. Let's just recalculate this up here. So there's that's the diff, that's the distance between the center of the Earth and the spacecraft. That's cool. Now uh, down here, I gave it some initial velocity, but I want to calculate that velocity. So let's just by putting in my equation that I had before. I'm just writing it down. I don't want to type it in the wrong. I'm pretty sure it's square root of g m over r. Yeah. Okay. So this is going to be square root of g times times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius, which is r. But I my r is a vector, so I need the magnitude of r. So that's that. Everything else should work. Uh, ooh. I want it to go there. I want it to go in the y direction. Let's see if that works. Boom! Check it. Circular orbit. Okay, I just ran it for some time, but it could go on forever. So that works. That's pretty cool, huh? Well, I'm excited. Okay, so let's get rid of that program and let's go back over here. And the one thing I wanted to do was to cap. First thing I want to do is calculate the uh, the time it takes for the International Space Station to go around the Earth. So I already put in some values up here. G is a gravitational constant. M is the mass of the Earth in kilograms. R is R E is the radius of the Earth. And then H is the altitude. I put it at 400 kilometers. I can never remember what exactly it is. So that's, that's that. So the first thing I'm going to do is calculate R. R equals, and remember, these are just numbers. Okay, you can't put units in there. If you want to put the units in there, that's probably a good idea. Uh, you can do things like this, kilogram, oops. put a comment, kilogram, meters, meters, okay, but that's fine. So R is going to be RE plus H. Now I want to calculate the angular velocity, omega is going to be equal to uh, the square root of G times the mass of the earth divided by the radius cubed. Now in Python, uh, raising something to a, a power is star star, so star star three is cubed. So that's the angular velocity in radians per second. And now the period is just gonna be uh, two times pi, and pi is built into Python, so you can choose two pi, divided by omega. Print orbital period equals t seconds. Okay, so now let's get that also in uh, in meter in minutes. So that's going to be equal to equals t divided by sixty would put it in minutes, and that's ninety two minutes right there. Uh, let me put an advertisement in here because that just tells you how long it takes the space station to go around the Earth. Not super long. Uh, that doesn't mean that you can see it every 90 minutes because it's not necessarily over your part of the earth. However, if you go to, I think this is the site, I'll put it in here as a comment, www.heavensabove.com. Is that right? Heavens, 
above.com. Yep. This site is awesome. Okay. So if I go over here and I click on the space station, uh, am I, I'm not logged in, am I? No, I'm not logged in. You have to tell your location and then it will tell you uh, when the next space station is going to come overhead and you should go see that because it is awesome. Okay, the end. Okay, now you know what we do? We change things and plot stuff. You know I like to do that. So let's make a graph. So let's change the orbital distance and plot the period uh, as a function of time. Okay, so I'm going to say T graph equals graph. The x title is going to be equal to uh, I'm going to uh, orbital orbital radius in meters, and then the y title is going to be equal to orbital period, and let's put this in units of hours. I don't know why I picked that. F1 equals g curve. And you know what I should do now? Oh, I'm gonna make it blue. You know, I like blue. Okay, so now I can start calculating stuff. So in this case, I want to change the orbital distance and then calculate the new period. So I need to start with, I'm gonna start with this value for R right there. That's my R. Okay, I'm already gonna use that. So now I need dr. So how much am I gonna change R by? Let's change it by a um, hundred kilometers. So every time I can recalculate 100 kilometers. And let's do this until, um, so say while r is less than, um, let's say 10 times the radius of the Earth. I'm really just making up stuff here, people. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is uh, I have my r value. I want to calculate the period. So I can just copy this stuff right here. And put it down here in my loop. There, so I'm gonna be changing r. Uh, now I'm going to plot a data point. Oh no, I need to, yeah, that's fine. So f1.plot, my x coordinate is going to be r, my y coordinate is going to be t, but I want it in hours, so it's going to be t divided by 3600, because there's 3600 seconds in an hour, 60 times 60. Uh, now I need to update r, r equals r plus dr. And I think that should be it. Let's see what happens. No, oh, they worked, okay. So right there, I'm pretty happy. Let's make this graph a little bit smaller. Uh, right here. Let's see if that works. That's good, okay, I'm happy. Um, so that's the orbital radius, and right here is 24 hours, somewhere around here, and you can see what the orbital radius would have to be. So it's actually really far away because like, remember this is, uh, this is the space station. This is 10 times the radius of the Earth. Uh, so as you get further and further away, it takes longer and longer to orbit. There you go. And that magic 24, which is actually not 24 because we need to, there's a difference between geostationary, uh, synodic orbital period and uh, sidereal. And so, but we'll just use 24 for right now because it makes the most sense. But you can see here how far things have to be put in geostationary orbit. That's where you'd put, um, let's say, uh, a weather satellite or a, a satellite TV satellite because they're always in the same place and you can find out where they are. Okay, uh, I will give you a link to both this code and the previous code and the previous video and there you go. I'll check you guys later. So, a reminder, get everyone to subscribe. Okay, subscribe to this. Um, subscribe, get your friends to subscribe, your physics teacher to subscribe, your students to subscribe. Everyone should subscribe so that I can get more subscribers because I need that. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.